Landscape photography in the Faroe Islands is simply put amazing and it has exploded within the last couple of years. The untamed, unexplored and raw nature stands strong in this collection of small islands within the harsh Atlantic Ocean. In this series I will present some of the most amazing landscape photography locations the Faroes has to offer and I will throw in a few I have found myself. I'll do that by taking one island at a time divided on the four islands we focused on. None of the videos in this series will fully explore and show what each island has to offer, far from it. So don't take this as a complete guide to the Faroe Islands. There is plenty of opportunity to go explore yourself. The first island on the list is Vaga and I'm super excited to get started, so without further ado, let's get going. Where Iceland is very well known for all the waterfalls, I would say that it's the seashore and the fjords which are the defining features of the Faroe Islands. With cliffs rising hundreds of meters vertically out of the ocean, the Faroes are both immensely impressive and deadly dangerous. You are also going to hear me warn you a lot about this and I am not sorry for being repetitive on this subject. The first location we are going to visit is exactly one of those features, a huge cliff rising straight out of the ocean along the seashore. It is one of the most iconic cliffs of the entire Faroe Islands and it's called the Witch's Finger. The Witch's Finger is easy to find from the small town of Sandavagur. You just have to follow the signs towards Trollkuna Fingur which basically translates into the Witch's Finger. Following the road at some point you will find a small parking lot where you can't drive further. You have to walk the last part, but it's only a few hundred meters. Of course, depending on how close you want to get to the finger. I decided to find myself a good spot where I could have some foreground and use the shoreline as a leading line towards the cliff. I wanted the sun to rise just above the island in the background, but the weather in the Faroe Islands is extremely local and completely unpredictable. It can snow on one side of the tunnel and be clear sky on the other. Even though my three different weather apps predicted clear sky, we still got hit by a cloud of rain. But as they say in the Faroe Islands, if you are not satisfied with the weather, just wait five minutes. So with that in mind, we waited, and I did get enough light to get the effect I wanted. Trelanipa is probably the most famous location in the entire Faroe Islands according to the social media. The cliffs at this location along with the big lake Leitisvatn makes an interesting perspective where it looks like the lake is flying. To get to Trelanipa you will have to get to the town of Midjavagur. Along the main road there is a sign towards Bøstadafossur. Following the signs, you will end up at a small gravel road where there is a small parking lot and an entrance to a trail towards Bøstadafossur. The trail is approximately 2 km long and is fairly easy to walk although big parts of it was very muddy when we were there back in March. The entire place is absolutely awe-inspiring. It's so beautiful. And standing at the edge of these cliffs, which have a vertical drop of hundreds of meters, makes you feel so insignificant in this big world, which is a very humbling experience. Trelanipa is also very impressive from the lower perspective, where the cliffs looks like the front of a ship. The location can be extremely slippery, so step with care. I'll recommend a good wide angle lens here. 16mm should be sufficient, but be sure to bring some kind of zoom lens too. 
There's also a good opportunity for photographing some wildlife here since the curious seagulls fly rather close to you. Close to Trelanipa you will find the waterfall Bøstaler for sure. The waterfall happens to be where the water from Leitisvarten runs into the ocean. It's another impressive location, but the biggest flow of water isn't visible from the southern viewpoint. To enhance the flow of water I used the massive waves that came crashing into the cliffs and sprayed water 50 meters into the air. When the water returned to the sea I could catch some rather beautiful streaks of water with some long exposures. When we visited this location clouds were forming all along the rocked coastline which just enhanced this dramatic and otherworldly view. If the land mortar from the Lord of the Rings had a seashore it will probably look something like this. Drangenir is an island or a rock formation if you will, which is formed as a huge arch and it is located between Vaga and the island Tinholmur. From Vaga you can get rather close to Drangenir and during 2017 it has become a rather popular location to visit for landscape photographers. That also be travel photographers and travel vloggers and bloggers and so forth. Be aware though that the hike out there is extremely demanding. If you are by car you will have to find the town Sørvagur, which is where the airport is located. When you reach Sørvagur just drive for the big round factory silos at the road Bakavegur past the harbor and the petrol station. There's plenty of parking spots and since we did the hike on a Sunday no one was working at the factory so we just drove as close to the trail as possible past the factory. Once parked and when you've found the trail along the water you will have to follow the fence up the mountain. From here there's a small almost invisible trail which from time to time disappears. Follow the trail around the three mountain sides and don't do as we did climbing the second. You might want to climb the third, which we did. It has an incredible view towards Tintholmur. All along the coastline, when you pass the last mountain side, there's plenty of opportunity for amazing compositions with strong focal points and leading lines. I actually got one of my favorite pictures from the entire trip here, which I caught on our way back when we suddenly, out of nowhere, got hit by a huge cloud of rain and hail. Up close, Drangenir is an impressive rock formation and you can get beautiful pictures from different perspectives since there's an entire ridge you can follow which increases in height. On the top of the ridge you will get a majestic view towards southeast where the hundreds of meters tall mountain walls rises out of the sea to create what I can best describe as a giant pot. On this hike you will want to bring as large a spectrum of focal lengths as you can. Bring plenty of food, proper clothing and footwear. You will have to walk for long on steep and inclined paths. That is if there is a path at all, so you will need a good amount of support for your ankles. We spent around 8 hours on this hike and I must say it was one of the hardest, if not the hardest hike I have ever been on. And you have probably already seen my video from Thorsmark in Iceland.
The last location I will present from Varga is probably also the most famous landscape photography location in all of the Faroe Islands. Gazadalur or Goose Valley is located in the westernmost part of Varga. The small village located within the valley is surrounded by 400 meter tall mountains and was not connected to the rest of the islands before 2004 where a tunnel was blasted through the mountains. The panoramic view over the ocean, with the waterfall Mullafossur and the town above it, is as taken out of a fairy tale. There's a small gravel road along the ridge of the southern side of the valley, which you can follow to get to the best viewpoint. You'll probably have to go a bit back and forth to find the optimal composition. There's even stairs down to another viewpoint, but the stairs are rather terrifying, so that's your call to go down there. We decided not to, since it was too slippery. And if you slip on the hillside here, you will probably die. After a slide down the steep hillside, there's a vertical drop straight down into the ocean. Lengthwise, you will be good with a 16 to 35 mm. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration. I would highly appreciate a like and if you want to follow on even more, you can subscribe to the channel. And remember Varga is way bigger than the 5 locations I have shown here, so there's plenty of room to go and explore yourself and find even more beautiful locations. In the next video we are going to Stremoy, which is the largest island in the Faroe Islands.